good decisions for yourself in choosing to be a contractor. Is that the case? Not only that, but I think it's noteworthy that in literally every hearing I have attended, whether at the state levels in New Jersey and California or at the federal levels, the USDOL hearings last summer, the U.S. Small Business Administration Office of Advocacy hearings last summer, the vast majority of participants who are actual independent contractors are screaming no and saying stop. The people who are showing up to push this on us are people like union lawyers like the woman sitting next to me. So I, I've got to think in your position, it would be extremely demeaning to be told that you're not intelligent enough, basically, is what's being told to make the decision that's best for you. What we see among the members of our group, they tend to go through something like the stages of grief. When they first find out what's going on, their first response is disbelief. There's no way the government could be trying to take away my income. How could, who am I bothering? I'm not doing anything wrong. Then they go and try to talk to their lawmakers, and they get the door slammed in their face. Then mm -hmm. it turns to shock. Then it turns to anger. If they have voted in the past for a lot of Democrats, their next emotion is betrayal. We see it all the time. And at that point, they're ready to fight. They're ready to stand up and fight for their careers. So yes, sir, we, we do feel quite disturbed by this whole thing. And we do intend to continue fighting for our rights to choose self-employment. Be very serious here. Phoenix man sues DoorDash, alleging driver masturbate, masturbated on her food. Ew. A Metro Phoenix woman is suing DoorDash and a delivery driver alleging that her Mexican food came with a sauce she did not order. Oh my God. The unidentified woman claimed the incident caused her emotional pain and suffering, lost wages, and medical expenses. According to the lawsuit filed October 11th in Maricopa County Superior Court, the food delivery gone wrong, woefully wrong took place on January 17th, 2022, when the woman placed an order with a Filib Filiberto's, hope I got that right, in Metro Phoenix using DoorDash. The company assigned the delivery to Jeffrey Reed Jacobs. Again, guys, Jeffrey Reed Jacobs, remember that name, um, who snagged the bag of food in the restaurant drive through according to the lawsuit. Jacobs then alleg allegedly pleasured himself and finished on the food. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, is there any more to this story? There is. He parked in the parking lot of the Filibertos and where he then proceeded to masturbate and ejaculate onto the plaintiff's um, food order. Uh, a Filibertos employee witnessed Jacob doing this, give, er, giving the alleged happy ending is what he says, um, <laughs> and, and tried to stop the dasher um, and return and get the 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 contaminated food back to the restaurant. Um, Jacobs allegedly refused the driver. No, oh, I'm good. And and took off. Now, after Jacobs left the parking lot, the restaurant employee I'm trying not to look. The restaurant employee contacted DoorDash and requested at, that the company alert the woman who ordered the food. Um, and DoorDash did just that. 40 minutes later, by that time, Jeffrey Reed Jacobs had delivered the food, uh, the contaminated food to the plaintiff, and she had ingested it. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, thoughts? <laughs> Oh, so I'm no. just curious, though, this is going to go down the slippery slope, but what kind of medical bills did she incur because of this? <laughs> I, I, I. Slippery slope. <laughs> That's what I heard when she said that. I mean, the thing is, though, the here's the here's the real clencher of this is that, you know, I, below there's a little more about how DoorDash takes this extremely seriously and blah, blah, blah. Their normal crap. They're but, sorry for the inconvenience that it caused. But the problem is, is they have it on a videotape at the at, from the restaurant. The guy is a witness to it. Um, the call was put in. They have a record of that. And they have a record that it took them 40 minutes to call her and tell her. So not only did they call, they told her, which they should. But they told her after the fact. 
again, proving it doesn't matter where you call, what you do. I mean, like if you get a person, you're lucky. But this, these are some of the worst customer service things ever, ever. All these apps, or you know, a few exceptions, but none like local, smaller apps. The big apps, wow. I mean, customer service is supposed to be the first thing of business. And this is the grossest thing ever. I mean, not ever. But this Can you imagine being bad. that woman had who had already eaten that? No. Like, and you get that phone call. Can you imagine? Except for <laughs> Donna's. <laughs> Donna's right, though. Ew. <laughs> Damn it, Tony. Is that one of yours? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it got enriched. <laughs> well, Donna up there um, said she was salty. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, though, like, yeah, of, of course, the first re reaction is, I am, oh my God. And, and of course, I'm sure she puked all night, kind yeah. of thing. You know, like went and got things to make her puke, held her tongue. I would have, I mean, like, I'd have yeah. gone nuts. Um, but at the same time, don't you, don't you think once she like had purged herself, she's like, I'm gonna sue the shit out of this company. <laughs> now again, it was it's back in 2022, but here it is now reaching court. It's gonna be now handled. So I mean, like her time has come, is what I'm saying. It should, I mean, I would think this is not, hey, here's five hundred thousand dollars. Shut up. This is a this could be a big one. That's disgusting. I mean, it should be. Man, I would have, I would have been like pain and like I would have done everything that she did, pain and suffering. I would have, I would have done everything she did. <laughs> yeah, because that's just disgusting. So, everybody in the chat, what would you settle for if this happened to you? Like, if Millions. you could just, if you just, if it has to be a fair number, obviously. Like, if you say twenty million, then it's like no, well, you disqualify. I would say two million. Well, I don't know. You guys are in the states. Like all your your lawsuits. <laughs> Kim seem, like, actually has a price high. for this. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> She's like, if it's two million or nothing, it's two million. <laughs> two million. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I was thinking five, just because I was thinking that they can afford it. They definitely don't want more publicity on it. How are you making fun of me at my two million and you go five million? What determines the amount? Uh, I'll, ra I'll raise your five to one billion. See, but now, now I'm gonna be your attorney and say, "Come on, dude, come on, <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on." <laughs> that's a sore subject, there, attorney Steve. Right? Yeah, that's I'm probably firing you. <laughs> well, actually, the lawyer probably would say that because it would be funny. Come on. <laughs> Does it say anywhere what the guy was charged with? He wasn't charged. He wasn't charged? That person he's still is on the platform. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, still he deactivated. He's That's a, it. He's, he's a top dasher. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Yes, yeah, Tom. Um, <laughs> I don't know, Tony, what's your take on this? Because I know that it goes a little longer, but I just, I think we hit the main part. But what's your take on this and what's uh, going to happen? <laughs> I don't think anything's going to happen. I mean, she'll get money. If they can prove it. Unless Dude, they, they DoorDash got a video. To, to they, got, they got a call from DoorDash. Uh, yeah. Which city? Hey, there's the cum game? on your food. This is really? in Phoenix. I just Phoenix? ate it. I think Phoenix's uh, court system is kind of jacked up right now, so they may not Oddly hear enough. It. You you make a good point because where are we talking about again? I even said it, Maricopa County. Yeah, which is where the Uber driver who so got no blamed for running charges? the autonomous got her life wrecked for twenty bucks an hour or whatever. Uh, well, then DoorDash How? isn't going to give him nothing, and sh this Jeffrey guy is going to be on the hook for it all. That's nasty. So the court system settled. this won't go anywhere. You think it's gone its length? <laughs> <laughs> Jody's <I'm> like, ew. <laughs> no crime committed. Wow. <laughs> what? 
Chappelle's like twenty million. <laughs> That's actually the point. Christopher Taylor says um, you don't know if he has any STDs. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, my guess is it was probably on some level, maybe not exactly, but treated like. I mean, I'm sure they use the people they use for. That's rape what her medical bills went in and DNA are. testing, all that kind of stuff, and follow ups and. I'm sure that we would hear that by now because it happened two years ago. Like that would be part of the story. Yeah, he, he also yeah. had SDDs, and so does she now. That would change everything. Well, oh, then yeah. if that was the case, I would go for like a billion. If that was the case, and... you wouldn't just go right. at that point. I would just go hunt him down. <laughs> I... um, now I've, I guess y'all noticed that I've. Uh, Steve knows how I've transitioned away from a lot of the gig food delivery stuff, but I've noticed where it has really slowed down a lot, though at least here in South Carolina. Has it slowed down for you in your market, Kim? I know that you're in a good place, you often say. And Dash, you're in Arizona where it's pretty busy, but has it slowed down though? Yeah, for for my area, it definitely has. I always, mm-hmm. you know, I, three years in a row, like my area has ramped up during the summer and we didn't mm-hmm. get that like ramping up like it normally does being down the shore. Um, I can't say that it was like super slow, like, oh my God, I'm in a summer slowdown, but it wasn't anywhere compared to what it has been the past three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that for my area, specifically in Arizona is kind of a interesting area because there's so much migration here. So when I say the migration, what I mean is that like at Arizona where I'm in Phoenix, it's a college town, there's snowbirds. So just the amount of people in the fall here is so much different than the summers. It slows down just because of that, especially when school's not in season. Um, so it slowed down relatively, but to say that it slowed down year over year, I won't really know until probably another month or two, honestly. Mm. What I've been finding, though, a lot in my area is there are a lot of new drivers. So, Mm. you know, with the years of doing this, like you get to know who your full time drivers are, even get to know who your the part time drivers are in your area. And there are so many new drivers in my Mm. area. You know, every day I'm like, my God, there are so many like it's just something you notice. And I just keep shaking my head like, wow, there are a lot of new drivers here. Yeah. Um, do you think as content creators, you may have contributed to the problem? I mean, there's someone, there's a, there's a <laughs> friend of mine, there's a friend of mine here in the Columbia area. Okay. He's always, he's always giving me grief saying, you're the reason why we're having this problem now. <laughs> you, gig geezer, you, Mr. $10,000 a month, you, Mr. $12,000 a month, you're the problem. <laughs> Um, I, I, it could be, you know, I, there's always that risk of being a YouTuber and, you know, having people, you know, know your area. And, you know, mm-hmm. when I first started, I'm like, yeah, I'm from now. I'm just like, I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> like, I don't even, you know, <laughs> but do you think it's, time. but do you think it's us content creators or do you think it's the 85% of the gig economy who does less than 20 hours a week who are just coming on maybe part-time or part-time plus and and having struggling at their other job or lost their other job yeah i mean we're in a recession there's inflation's mm-hmm. through the roof i mean I there's a lot of other fa- i don't think it's content creators because we only make up 15 percent of the full-timers anyway you, you get what i'm saying it's, it's, it's just that there's the you know there's but there's the certain visibility that we give to this people do i mean when i first when i really tried to improve my uh driver rating on doordash this is something I shared at one point though. Um, it took me up to, it took me like 500 deliveries to get over a 4.50 rating. I got on YouTube to figure out ways to, um, improve my rating. Okay. Now, of course you get, you get to look at other content. You may see somebody talk about how I made $2,000 this week. I made $1,500 this week. Yeah. And so, You know, you've got this glamorization, glamorizing of things, and people think that, oh, I can go out there and make $1,200 this week doing DoorDash or Grubhub or UREACH. And so, just curious, do you feel that, do you feel that we may have contributed to that problem? Or is it just that? I'll I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll I'll put it this way. At any given job, I've never seen an extremely high percentage of people that are looking to get better at it. And I think, Mm With gig work, just like any other position, there's going to be 10 to 15% that are actually looking to get better at their job. Everybody else is going with the flow. 
Now, I'll take mm-hmm. that one step further to say if those people, though, are in your market, they are probably going to come to the store you're showing in your videos. I will say that. So, like, if they're saying my store that we're always at is now kind of saturated, uh, I would agree with that because, yeah, I would agree with that piece of it, yeah. But guess, just in general, I wouldn't say so. I guess I'm just never worried because even if, you know, say a couple people come to my market because, you know, I everybody, you know, no people know my market, they don't know it as well as I do. Someone who just comes to my market doesn't know where to park, doesn't know the side streets, doesn't know the restaurants to pick up from, doesn't know the ins and outs of my area. Like I like I know my area, like the back of my hand that I know this time to be here, this time to like I, I, I've almost perfected my own system at this point for my own area. So they're not going to have the same experience that I have based off of the knowledge. I mean, they could, if they keep going and doing it, you know, for, you know, months at at a time, but, you know, I just know my area and I know where to go. So I don't think they're going to have the same experience that I do just Mm -hmm. based off of what I know. Mm -hmm. I think, I think I, what I would say to this is that I think that um, we just have to be very, I mean, we should anyway. I mean, I did an independent contractor piece today where I was dealing with very, I mean, people who write federal legislation and stuff were on the, were on the stream with me. So on a very professional level, and it kind of me, it's kind of having me think now that you asked me that, because um, I think we have to be very careful about how we say, like how you were saying glamorizing, you know, like, yeah, don't glamorize it. If you, if you made 2000, explain to people that that took you 90 or a hundred hours mm-hmm. because that might unglamorize it mm-hmm. because who's, I mean, people, most people who are looking at these, maybe they're not hearing the hours to go along with the earnings, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I think this is a whole piece. If you're going to, if you're going to talk about a specific earnings, talk about your market, make sure you're, even though it sounds like a broken record, make sure you repeat that. Cause like you said, geezer, somebody could be coming out and catching, your first video. And if you're talking about earnings, you have to talk about all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, here was my dash time. Here was my active time on DoorDash. Wait, so you spent 40 hours not working at all, just staring at the damn map. Well, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, don't, don't tell people like, don't come on and say I made two grand and I did it in 42 hours, but you were on the app 90 hours. Right. I, mm-hmm. I will agree with Geezer in the sense that we do glamorize. It. I think we intend to publicize it to motivate other people who are doing the same things that we do to educate people already doing the thing that we do. But I think naturally there's going to be people that don't do that, that find it and say, okay, let me try this. But the amount of people that I think that are actually going to quit a full-time job and go into gig work full-time, I don't think that we're convincing people to do that, no. No, but what about people who get laid off or fired and can't find another job real quickly and like zap onto YouTube for a minute? And they're like, wait a minute, all these people are making, like these are saying, like, hey, look at these people making twenty five hundred bucks a week. Yeah, so I think like, those so... people, I think they'll they'll find it. I think they would have found it regardless. I think that we're making the videos now, but I mean, ten years from now, fifteen years, it'll be somebody else. Well, yeah, I get, I get what I get. What you're saying, I just threw it out there. Um, I, I guess too, with the economic conditions out there, yeah, people are trying to make whatever they can, whatever yeah. way they can. And quite honestly, if I'd known about some of this stuff ten years ago, um, I'd probably been in a much different situation ten years ago. So, um, you know, I'm I'm glad that I eventually stumbled onto the gig economy, and it has turn things around for me at the same time. um, I, but I I think though that the visible, the gig economy stuff has more visibility than it did just 10 years ago. Oh yeah. Oh, 100%. Agreed. And so, uh, you know, and and 10 years ago it was only ride share. Yeah. Yeah. It was Uber and Lyft, depending on where you were. Um, DoorDash, what was that? You know, what was Grubhub? (laughs) <laughs> but as Kim says, you know, she she noticed the new drivers. Yeah, the the, the dead giveaway for me is those crisp red um, DoorDash bags that I see people show up with. Oh, yeah. I know that that's a that's a new thirsty. That's a new thirsty. <laughs> First thing comes up comes to mind to me. <laughs> so one of somebody should do a video that says, "Hey guys, don't look like a noob and run your bag over a few times with your car." 
<laughs> like make it look like you've been working for a minute. Yeah, look like you've been there. Look like you've been here before. <laughs> you know, or they the come. Funny, the funny yeah. thing is, is my DoorDash bag had seen its day, and I ordered a couple months ago, like the two pack that you get. And I'm like, I'm gonna look like a new. I like, I have over ten thousand deliveries, but I'm gonna look like a new driver because I have a new DoorDash bag. <laughs> Well, that's why I bought my own stuff. <laughs> but in, in, I mean, I, I would, stuff. you know, I would ask, yeah. I would kind of ask the same thing to you, Geezer, kind mm -hmm. of like, how are you feeling about it? Because like, I mean, here's a perfect example of what I was saying about like way going the wrong direction and leading people the wrong ways. Like those people who put start your own van business for $500. Bullshit. Thank you for saying that and <laughs> not me saying it. I usually am the one who's saying that, okay? <laughs> no, but honestly, that's, I mean, when I see those, I get so mad because I'm like, come on, guys, this is the kind of stuff you're talking about that's horrible. Well, I've also been blocked on a few channels for challenging people for saying um, you can make this. And I'm like, hey, what did you do last week? What did you do in your van last week? Instead of regurgitating and reading from a computer screen, what did you do? Yeah. Share what you did. And so um, that, that again, that's why I've been blocked on a few uh, channels already because of that. Um, eh, you know what? Yeah, I, I agree with you. You got to show receipts. Can't show receipts. I mean, like if if you know, you and I have talked about it before. But like if a year ago you were talking to somebody who was coming to you that you knew for solid advice, you know, you've known mm -hmm. them as a friend for a while, and they said, "Hey, listen, I'm you know, I really am thinking about this van business. Give me the lowdown." And you did. And you said, yeah, I think you could do well. I mean, would you give that person the same advice today? Well, this time a year ago, I had no thought I, there, that would not have been in my thinking about a van. Okay. So if you ask seven me that months, question, eight months, <laughs> 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 whatever puts it into the perspective of when you were. OK, OK. All right. OK. If some if someone I've known over the years come to me now, mm -hmm. I would just tell them to check out my videos. And not so much as, you know, trying to sit, be the salesmanship of my channel, but right. check out my videos and see what I have done over the course of time. Um, and I, I, I believe, though, that, um, you know, with what we do, it is what you make of it, regardless of what it is, it's what you make of it. So you can have all the apps, you can have all the ends of all the, um, the brokers. And if you can't make it work, you're still you're going to say that this sucked anyway. Mm -hmm. Facts, <laughs> big facts. Yeah, article a while ago, but I didn't like. It's so weird. So this lady, um, jumped out of a lift. Do you know about this? And they deactivated her. No, they deactivated the lady. They just the driver, reactivated. Driver jumped out of the lift. Yeah, no, the the passenger, but she just got reactivated. Wait, the passenger got deactivated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For really? jumping out while it was... Yeah, she got deactivated for jumping out while it's moving. Why'd she jump out? Why'd she jump out? It's, it's oh. not the one that was skittish that we talked about before, was it? An Arlington, Virginia woman um, thought she was about to be kidnapped during a lift ride that she called one of the most terrifying experiences of her life. Yeah, we talked well, about this before. I would have jumped out, too. Oh, we did? Yeah, yeah we talked this about was... this once before. This is out from today. Well, well, no, no, no. We talked about her jumping out of the car. We didn't talk about her being deactivated or anything. Okay, so uh, um, Caitlin was headed uh, just a few miles uh, to the middle of Northwest D.C. Of course, D.C., right? Um, <laughs> aren't just our nation's capital. <laughs> Saturday night. Um, so, no, this is new, bro. Um, Saturday night oh, when well, her we, Lyft we driver... I know, and that one was on the highway, remember? Yeah, that's what I, was, I thought it was the yeah, same so, Hold on. So, um, the, so uh, when her Lyft driver started making wrong turns, the 29-year-old told, um, uh, she said, my heart was in my stomach just racing. Um, we, are going, uh, we are going the in, entirely wrong direction now. I'm supposed to be going left. He is going right. I keep calling out to him, sir. This is actually left, not right. He's not answering me. Um, she got a text from Lyft saying she was not headed in the right direction and asking if she would like to be called by a representative. Did she say yes or what did she say? I don't know, man, but why would this even, why wouldn't they be calling the driver? Yo, 
That's like, that's, that's a very scary situation, though. Yeah, when when like. the car slowed down, she decided to jump out of the movie. I don't blame vehicle. her. I would too. Why would you not <laughs> you gotta, put yourself? You got to make a move. <laughs> you got to make a move. You know. Would you tuck and roll, Kim? How, yeah, how fast would it go? I would. <laughs> so I would have fallen down. It, it, it says here when the car slowed down, she decided to jump out of the moving vehicle. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it wasn't a big thing. If it's, scene, like, if so, it's I mean... me, if it's my life versus being in a vehicle where I feel like I'm being kidnapped, heck yeah, I'm going to jump out of but, car. But it, but it but says. Was it her life or was he just going the wrong way? <laughs> like, but, but it also says here that, you know, Lyft notified her by text, though. That say, hey, you're moving in the wrong direction. Would you like a safety call from a representative? Why didn't right. she take the safety call? I don't know. She so probably thought she didn't she was like, I Well, it says go. below that move. Caitlin said she never received a call from Lyft and was actually notified by the ride sharing company that they deactivated her account for jumping out of a moving car. Would you like it's probably one of those things where it's like, would you like she, us to call you? And you were she like, protested yeah. numerous times over the next few days and eventually her account was reactivated. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't think I, I should be deactivated for jumping out of a moving car. That's what I think. Okay, that's fine. We'll just react. So well, what, what happens to the driver? driver? Usually like, a delay. <laughs> is there any information about what happened to the driver? Like what was is like he wasn't listening when she was asking. Probably a him false questions. identity. Well, so the so the the lift spokesman, here's here's the lift spokesman's um, statement, which we always love these. It's a quote. Safety is fundamental to lift, clearly. Um we take reports like this seriously and always work to take immediate and corrective action. Regrettably, our first response came up short, and therefore we have reactivated the rider's account and contacted her to offer our support. Since day one, we have worked hard to design policies and features that help protect both drivers and riders, and we are always looking for ways to make Lyft an even safer platform to the community. I don't know about you guys, but the part I didn't like about this, regrettably, our first response came up short. Okay, she it sounded page. like she was like waiting for the call. Maybe she read it wrong or something. She's like, where's the call? And they're like, why aren't you responding? What if she was tied up? Yeah. <laughs> well, she, could, she could have answered the call if she was tied up. It's going, way. Lyft. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm curious what happened to the driver. It doesn't say anything yeah. in here. Well, because I don't he hadn't done anything yet other than make some wrong turns. <laughs> what are you going to charge him on? Not knowing the neighborhood too well. <laughs> I mean, I mean like bit... maybe, and maybe he didn't speak English. Maybe she's like shouting at him. He's like, I don't know what the hell you're saying. Oh, at least I hope that it has some kind of investigation in terms of has this person been weird and creepy other times going the wrong direction. Or there's just like this one instance. I, I mean, it looks like nothing happened to the guy, so yeah. Do you I mean, they say if the person was deactivated, they'd want to, you know, yeah, like kick him out, like, hey, yeah, we took care of this driver, but she was like, you know, I mean, if, if you if you listen to her statement here, you know, she's actually telling the driver he's going the wrong way, and the driver's just ignoring her, right? But again, maybe he yeah. doesn't speak English, and like taxi drivers do this sometimes, they don't speak English, and you're like, hey, man, you know, maybe I've even been a little tipsy sometimes. And, I don't yeah, know, but, and you want to go, and he's like, well, let's do But as a woman, if you don't feel safe, I would rather be safe and alive than <laughs> know down the road I'm being kidnapped and being dead somewhere. So it's kind of a risk you have to kind of outweigh. If you really feel that it's, you let that unsafe, then I would rather be alive and be cautiously alive than in the back and, of somebody's vehicle. Right. And I, I'm guessing the car was slowed down enough that she didn't get seriously injured or else she'd probably yeah. be suing Lyft. So, I'm surprised she's not suing Lyft regardless. Well, I, I mean, know. however, I mean, you know, I, I a fly on a wall. This is a, we all need to be a fly on, on, on this ride to see how it really went down. I, I would love to see how this actually played out. Was the driver that sketchy? Was he just stupid? You know, we need dash cam footage. Moment YouTube prankster Tanner Cook first approached Wait, Alan Coley, and the moment Coley shot Cook in the stomach. Well, serious charges last week, a jury siding with his argument of self defense. And now, for the first time, we're seeing the right now we're getting a look at newly unsealed video in the case of a Northern Virginia DoorDash driver who shot a prank YouTuber at Dulles Town Center. 
So the man who opened fire was acquitted on the most serious charges last week, a jury siding with his argument of self-defense. And now, for the first time, we're seeing the brief encounter that led up to those shots being fired at the mall. Just 20 seconds, 20 seconds from the moment YouTube prankster Tanner Cook first approached Alan Coley and the moment Coley shot Cook in the stomach. This was the key piece of evidence in the case that jurors considered when acquitting Coley of the most serious charges of malicious wounding. The full five-minute video shows Tanner Cook scoping out victims of his prank, playing odd and explicit messages on his phone. He then approaches Alan Coley, who was picking up a food delivery for his job with DoorDash. Coley tells Cook to stop several times and threatens to call police. Then a huge escalation, and in just 20 seconds, he pulls a handgun out of his pocket and shoots Cook in the stomach. Cook, who has since recovered, reacting to our Matthew Torres about the not guilty verdicts last Thursday. How disappointed are you about this? So I really don't care. I mean, it is what it is. It's God's plan at the end of the day. So, you know, we respect what the jury says. Um, and my family and I are just grateful and thankful that I have my son here and nothing else matters right now. That was the first time I seen the video. Um, no mom wants to see their son be shot by a complete stranger in an occupied place. It was very shocking and um, very heart-wrenching. Tanner Cook also telling WUSA 9 this incident won't stop him from making more YouTube videos. Opinion about his content on YouTube. Do you agree with it? I support Tanner in whatever he decides to do, and I'm going to continue supporting him. Now, the jury did find Coley guilty of a charge related to firing the gun in the mall, but that particular verdict was set aside and is going to be reevaluated since he was acquitted on the other charges. What what just happened? <laughs> that, was, that was horrible. I mean, in a mall, first of all, like, I, I get that the guy was, like, overly aggressive with his phone. You know, like, you don't, pu you don't push your phone into somebody's face. I mean, he was doing things that might have, it wouldn't have shocked me if the guy hit him. Because I know some people carry weapons, mo mostly rideshare drivers, maybe more delivery drivers are than I think do these days. I don't know. Um, I know delivery drivers now, but some of this is the fact that you're in your car a lot and driving too many hours, but delivery drivers now ranked into the top 10 um, most dangerous uh, things to do in the United States. Um, I never thought food delivery was going to be one of the top 10 most dangerous jobs. You know, I would think Secret is one Service. Of the, is one of the top ten. Really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Part of it's auto accidents, though. It's not just this kind of I, stuff. I, I can understand people too that. many hours. Yeah, you know, whatever, getting hurt, getting killed. Um, but I don't know what is. I, I mean, literally, like, where? Did, first of all, where did this go wrong? Why is this YouTuber going to continue to make videos? How was he walking so quick? Um. It, it went wrong when he decided to accept the order on DoorDash that was inside the mall. That was his first mistake, okay? <laughs> and I'm not trying to make light of the situation, but once he said he's picking up a door, and then he brought his bag all the way in the mall, like, nah, man. <laughs> all jokes aside, though, yeah, it's... I mean, I don't know, David, and, like, why is he acquitted? What are they, I mean, is it... My guess is, is they're come, gonna come back with many charges on this guy. Yeah, I think it's too powerful for them not to do something, but I just think there's a couple sad things, right? It's like, one, you know, why do you think it's okay to harass somebody, right? You know, go in and play the thing and their thing. I just don't think those things are that funny. I mean, I, you know, it's, the guy's just trying to do his job, too. Also, just because you're stupid doesn't mean you deserve to get shot, right? So uh, I guess that's how I feel about it. But, you yeah, know, I... people are stressed, right? When, when seeing something like that, First thing that comes to mind is could could it have been avoided? The gun, the gunshot. I, I think in every serious way it injury, should have been avoided. I think it could have. <laughs> um, I'm not a legal expert by any means, and I'm not well versed in the laws of that particular jurisdiction by any means, but I'm also not gonna sit here and say that I can equivalent or estimate how much force is required when dealing with a perceived threat. And see, that's the one thing we got to realize is the reason they didn't find him guilty is because it was the perceived threat. It doesn't matter the response and the if it was the equivalent level of violence needed to 
approach or address that threat where is basically they saying is there was a level of threat either he had justification to fear for his life or whatever the underlying circumstances may be but what i have did that what i have shot a firearm in a crowded mall with kids and other people around and bullets ricochet and no that's stupid but yeah. <clears throat> do i do i think that that's not within that man's right to do that it's not a smart thing to do but he's firm for his life it's yeah. just a bad situation all the way around if you really think about it he shouldn't have picked he should have accepted a doordash order that's going in the mall <laughs> okay okay but that then aside he, <laughs> then he took his whole delivery bag all the way. Did you see how he was holding the food? Yeah. No, nah, like it was just a bad situation. And yeah, some, all most, my, all most my... people who carrying guns, especially into crowded areas with kids and they, they scared of everything. He he looked at like he was scared of everything. Any level of confrontation would have made him let that gun off. So it just it, it who even knows if. He was supposed to have the gun, but that's a whole nother situation. The point is, they said he not guilty for that. Now, could he be held civilly liable? Oh, absolutely. It's lots of people around there that could sue for that incident happening and them being affected. It's lots of people, not just the per people involved directly, but indirectly. So that's a whole nother thing. I and mean, what's crazy to me was also watching the mom's reaction, right? Uh, so <laughs> I was like, well... Yeah, that's that was that. I mean, there was a few things for me. The YouTuber saying that he wants to continue, and that mean to me that meant continue doing that type of stuff. You just got shot over it. You know, you're gonna go do it again. The mom backing him, kind of maybe that explains why he's that way. I don't know. Um, but here's the craziest part to me is that I did ride share for many, many years. Um, I was I worked in a bar and was leaving the place at 4 a.m. into an alley to go home many, many times. So if somebody approached me when I was door dashing at 1 a.m. and pulled a knife on me in an alley and I have a gun, I might pull it on him. I'm still not going to shoot him right away. I'm going to try and de-escalate or whatever, but I might pull it on him. But in a mall, you know, second, I'm very shocked that, I mean, I guess if you have it on, you don't want to leave it in your car and get that. But to, I mean, I would never pull it out in the mall. There's, you got the mall cops. You got the, I mean, nobody, nobody would do anything. And the other guy didn't have a weapon. In Missouri, I don't think you're allowed to bring firearms inside of any sort of strip mall, shopping mall, theater, any anything where it's a public place. Mm -hmm. And it's lots of people. I don't even think you're allowed to bring any type of firearm. I, I think they literally have the sign on the door. So, yeah. Unless you law enforcement, but again, it's um, not something I would recommend that young man continue doing. And as far as the parents' reaction, that was just unheard of. I can't believe she actually said that to the news. Yeah, I mean James Ray is right. However, <laughs> I mean I'm looking at the channel right now, so I'm not giving him a play. But it's you know two months ago was I got shot, and his latest one is detained at the airport. So it's a video of him getting arrested at the airport. So I guess. But, you know, that was a fast recovery from being shot. I mean, that's that's what I was saying, too. Like, like, as he's walking out and they're interviewing him, he's just like, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. Like, you didn't even you learn nothing from that. <laughs> I mean, absolutely and I guess, nothing. And I guess, you know, here's the I mean, the weirdest thing is here we are talking about the YouTuber and we're not even talking that. Much. I mean, we're more focused on his mom and her and him. And why is he going to continue when really this door dasher still did that? Yeah, he was tweaking. I mean, look, I'm not the person who goes and shoves a camera in your face and says, ha, I'm on YouTube. You're on it now, too, DoorDash or ha ha. But if I was, I wouldn't expect to ever get shot in a mall. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And I mean, that's that to me, this is like if if you the first time I saw it, I was like, what? This is I mean, it just happened too quickly. It, it seemed like something a 2 a.m. alley situation. Is this YouTube a minor? Uh, I don't think so. Are they are they a minor like under the age of 18 or are they just like a young content creator? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, either the, way, it's everybody was young. Everybody be, involved was young. So I, I mean, I've I just I couldn't even imagine. Eric, Eric, and I, I couldn't imagine just approaching somebody with that 
level of confrontation in a personal space. You don't know them all for mm-hmm. a prank. Seems pretty dangerous to me. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. This cruise vehicle in San Francisco. Another problem in San Francisco. And if you'll notice at the end, even the county is now stepping in. So we have the mayor, we have the fire department, the police department, and now we have the county. But like wanting these things out of here. And I'm going to show you what happened because it's a super disturbing story. So um, you guys know I love autonomous. So (laughs) here is where the failure is at currently. Is this where we become entertaining? (laughs) Yeah, this is where you should be entertaining. Learning more about the accident. (laughs) left a woman pinned underneath a cruise robo taxi in san francisco here's how it went down she was actually hit by another car with the human driver and then thrown into the path of the driverless car nbc scott budman saw the video and has the latest the cameras on board the cruise robo taxi captured the accident the company is not yet making that video public but did show it to me earlier today it's not easy to watch the pedestrian crossing the street, not in a crosswalk, though, and gets hit by a car being driven by a driver. The force of that accident sends the pedestrian into the next lane. That's where the cruise robo taxi comes in. The robo taxi does stop, but not before also hitting the pedestrian. Shortly after the accident, officers found the victim under a self driving car. The person who triggered the accident had taken off. 911 dispatchers received a report of a person trapped under a vehicle at 5th and Market Streets. Rescuers arrived to find a person under the left rear axle of an autonomous vehicle that came to a stop. They then went into rescue mode. Rescuers were able to use the jaws of life and other rescue tools to pull the victim from underneath the vehicle. First responders say she was rushed to SF General with multiple serious injuries. No word on her condition tonight. But the accident is once again raising questions, fair or otherwise, about the safety of driverless cars. We saw what happened last night in San Francisco. That can't happen. San Mateo Supervisor David Canepa, concerned about robo-taxis, says it's time to slow things down. His comments coming after robo-taxis got the green light to send cars to SFO. What I'm saying is, if you have so many accidents in San Francisco, take a pause. They do, they do this in tech all the time. They do this if, if there's bugs or if there's something that needs to be uh, worked out. In a statement, Cruz says the initial impact of the first car launched the pedestrian in front of the autonomous car. The AV then braked aggressively to minimize the impact. The driver of the other vehicle fled the scene. At the request of the police, the AV stayed in place. Cruz says their first concern is the well-being of the injured woman and say they're working with police to identify the responsible driver. Scott Budman, NBC, Bay Area News. Okay. So... The thing that you guys didn't see there is if you go and look up other stories of this, you'll see what the police had to deal and the fire department had to deal with when they got there, which was jacking the car up and using blocks because the car parked on her. So the cruise not only hit her that second time, it parked on top of her. Now, was she like underneath the tires or underneath the no. actual? Okay. She was on, but she was being, but she was, I mean, she was, uh, Cruz she has was low clearance. Yeah. Right, right. She was crushed. Basically. She was crushed. Yeah. But can I play devil's advocate for half a second? <laughs> Please. No. I, I got to see where this goes. <laughs> You're going to defend autonomous here. Okay. Cool. I'm not defending autonomous vehicle, <laughs> but technically, isn't it the person who did the hit and run that the story should be about? Because they hit the person and then fled the scene of the crime. I mean, that's, that's exactly, I mean, well, yes. I'm just saying, okay. like, I'm saying we like I'm skipped yes. over that whole entire part. <laughs> okay, I, I agree. Like, I agree. If the person but, didn't but do the hit and out. run, then the autonomous vehicle wouldn't have ran over the woman. So it started with the person who was actually <laughs> in the car driving. 
while I and ran away. away. <laughs> while and I ran agree, away. Why the lidar is about 200 200,000 now is what they cost. They don't work very well. Um but the okay, so if the person they said wasn't in the crosswalk and was just crossing, so Cruz recognizes crosswalks and all that. Why didn't the lidar say there's a person in the road crossing before they were hit? I'm saying because it would have yeah, the too, lidar right? should see it on anywhere above the car, whatever. It should see the person and it should just stop but they weren't because in, there's a the person, person crossing in illegally her, in that lane. The person was actually who cares what lane the they're in? There's a person. Stop. So I think so. I think it was that's the problem is that it did stop that like. That's, well, it that's ran them over first. But well, it stopped. Well, no, their throat under the person. ran them over. That's so horrible to say. <laughs> that was so bad. Because they so did bad. say that it was the force of the the first car that hit her Underneath that the car. knocked her Thank into you, the other car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, he's, you're right, Vinny. I mean, she did illegally cross the street. What I'm saying, though, is where, where is the technology? always have the right of way. Where's they? this technology, though? Because, again... This this thing should have just stopped. It's not. We're not talking about two drivers and who's responsible. We're talking about an autonomous vehicle, and this isn't its first offense. San so, Francisco wants them out. They're, so I think they're, the question is the physics of the matter. Is like was the the car going at say forty miles per hour, and the woman being thrown at it at twenty miles per hour? Did it have enough space to stop? I well, like, I'm gonna say what's the lesser space. of the offenses right so you have the first person who hit the woman she projectiled into the other lane but then the first person fled the scene but at the same god this lady is really unlucky she should not yeah. play the lottery <laughs> and then <laughs> she basically <laughs> she got like, hit twice in the pit. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's like the chances and then there and then the third department's using twice. wooden blocks to get that yeah. car up to get the car I mean, out. they literally were like, "This she was pinned. She got to sue that company. I don't know how much for, but definitely. Well, also a, a lawyer you know, got to be there somewhere. Also, don't we have the the video? I mean, shouldn't that Cruz have the video of the car that did hit and run? Oh, I said it does. Yes. No, the guy said he saw cool. it. So they're right, but I mean, like, it should now, have the hopefully. license plate, the make, model, everything, because it records everything. Right. But you're saying she should sue. The company for the autonomous I'm saying vehicle. first. I'm saying I hope she lives. <laughs> oh yeah, God, yeah. I hope she can't sue anybody. I really hope so. <laughs> she was having a really bad day. That's the only thing I can say. Like yeah, but see, Vinny, here's where here's where I get weird with. This is my problem with full autonomous, no driver, safety driver, anything. We're just it keeps getting pointed out and pointed out and pointed out by the cities it's active in that we're not there. We're not there. I've talked. I've I've talked to technicians in the field. We're not there. I've had them on the podcast. We're not there, and yet they're running these things without humans. I mean, we've seen them. We've seen police officers walk. We played these videos. Police officers walk up to them to try and stop it because it's not moving at a light. What does it do? The light's red. It sees the police officer comes up, and it takes it as a threat and guns it through the intersection. Who if I did that, I'm going to jail. Yeah. If Cruz does that, they just pay a fine. Well, they have to have cameras because if these little robots on the street delivering food can tell who was trying to steal the bot for the police department, then I'm sure that these cars have to have cameras on them. Yeah, I mean, and this made me bring up a couple things like here. I took some screenshots because I wanted to show this that so I wanted to, I looked up in Canada if you guys even had it, Cheyenne, if you guys have anywhere that's doing autonomous. And I pulled up some things like, um, does Canada allow it? Uh, they allow level three for vehicles authorized for purchase or sale. Level three is not that's anywhere level. near what we're testing on our people. You What's guys level three? Level yeah. three is like assisted parking. Um, okay, like I was gonna say, like in our vehicle, we have assisted parking. We yeah. have like a heads up display. Like we or have like the, you you start know, someone off the road. It can steer yeah. you back. Yeah, exactly. Like the lane departure and all that kind of stuff. We don't have any like yeah, this. right. Yeah. And so, um, our autonomous cars legal in Ontario. So, um, you the manufacturer plates. This was a little strange to me. The M plates. 
um, are for testing, but I think that they still had to have a driver. Um, are, are any cars fully autonomous? I found this interesting. No, no car. No, this is from 2023. No, the article was no vehicle can drive itself, but these come the closest. Yeah. So nope, we, that's not even Canada. That's just autonomous. So we're testing things we know don't work. Um, where are they tested? San Francisco, Austin, and Phoenix are the main are the only cities where unmanned ones are t- are tested. And then, um, what is the Waymo controversy? Protesters stop Waymo and cruise self driving cars with only a traffic cone. Um, self driving cars. I mean, look if you can, if a traffic cone stops, there's so many issues with these things, but then here's the one I find the most interesting. So if you guys are curious, the, yeah, San Francisco, Phoenix, and Austin are all green, but look at all the purples. That's where there's a driver in the car, but they still are problematic to the T. So that's the map currently of where we're testing this stuff. So one of the screenshots that you just showed was talking about a um, uh, the taxis are coming. So they'll actually have someone in the back, but no one in the driver's seat. They have those in Phoenix already. I haven't taken them, but the, I think we watched it. Did we watch somebody that had one Wait, last week? You mean a you mean a like a like an engineer for the company in the back seat or no, a like a, like a passenger? Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So you do have driverless with the passenger. I'm wondering if you're, maybe you guys are like, can you get one? Because I'm wondering if like, you're still at the level, like John, John for a while, Waymo only did it. If you were part of Waymo's family is the best way I can put it. I don't really know how to say it. Um, but like they, it wasn't available to everybody, but they were letting some people use it. They used their own lane, leaving the airport. Um, but again, John lives in Phoenix and there was, I mean, for years, ever since that accident years ago, there's been people with cinder blocks dropping them on these things from, from overpasses. I mean, people in Phoenix hate these things, you know, Pittsburgh them kicked, the kicked them out. Too, apparently. San Francisco's about to kick yeah. them out. Um, the fire departments plowed a few in San Francisco, the fire chief, the police chief, the mayor all want the cars out. It was governor Newsom that allowed it. And now they're saying, get them out of here. You know, because the other problem that's going on with crews is that it they have certain routes in San Francisco that they have to take. So A to B is in a 15 minute rideshare ride. It's like a 40 minute loop. And for a while, they were only letting a few do it. Now it only runs at night and it's kind of a bar thing. And the new thing is having sex in them. Well, yeah, because nobody's there to watch you, right? Well, it's being videotaped. I say, well, no. there's videos now. <laughs> Mobile hotel. <laughs> That's true. But it's Someone's a new, I mean, a view. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, that or drugs or something. I mean, like, that's, where is this technology? You can't, you know. That's it, so to, crazy. To me, we're clearly experimenting in cities that pay enough or that are being paid enough money by these companies. The cities are willing to lose a certain percentage of their people. <laughs> so, or put them at risk. And that, in in my mind, it goes applies to the other drivers too. There's not a good mix of a human robot thing. And uh, I still don't understand how we're here, but yet when you look in a driver's manual, they tell you when you put your vehicle on cruise control, you still have to pay attention, and you still have to steer, and you still ha- like it, it. Does it mean that you can't pay attention anymore? But yet we're gonna have vehicles out there that have absolutely no driver in it i don't know, I don't know. what we do me. you guys don't because you're smart we do <laughs> <laughs> we we like our, our cities sell out like uh already they're working on where it'll go from san francisco because they need that third city for whatever reason so the new target town that's already made an agreement is charlotte north carolina which was on the other map i just showed as a purple one but it's going to become a green one so I don't know why, like, as as they keep failing more and more and more, we onboard more cities to test them in. <laughs> like, you guys. You need to test more. <laughs> no, like, I've said this for a while. Like, you know what? These companies have endless pockets. This technology is not ready. 
build a city south of John in the desert. Just build a city where people aren't going to well, live. I, I think it'd have to be north. I think you go too much south of me. You're in well, wherever, <laughs> wherever. Yeah, you know what it I mean. It would never though. work in Just New find Jersey find some York. big area. Let them build a city and let all the companies test there where people are not, and see how they integrate even together because that's an issue too. This would never yeah. work in New Jersey or New York. We are just way too congested for something like Definitely this to happen. No. I mean, I when it the I think when we first see it, I honestly believe that it will be their own lanes. I don't think they'll be able to. I think it'll be more like a train. It's not going to get you to where you need to be. It's going to get you close. Because we, I've even seen the cruise vehicle that the whole side door comes up and you're sitting like facing each other in it. And I'm thinking like that's going to be more like a train. It's just going to take you to here, and that's like your neighborhood. And we, I think Gary and I both got fooled. We thought there was a super positive story. Man, I thought it was like a superhero story. Yeah, I we're like, excited to bring you guys some positive news, and it is, I guess. I mean, because the ending is happy, but the story could have ended misleading. badly. Yeah, it's a yeah. not bad ending, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it should be from hero to zero, because that girl, that woman's no hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, she stops it, but it wasn't. It wasn't it was her fault. Yeah, hey, you it's might want to explain what you're talking about. Yeah, let's just jump into that one first. So we thought we found a good story. Sorry, they're hard to find. <laughs> but um, the title is "DoorDash Driver Stops Carjacking Child Abduction in Oakland Hills, Oakland." Okay, so Oakland Hills must be an upscale area, I'm guessing, because you can kind of see the houses on the video. And the fact that it's a nice SUV that the, the delivery person is leading or is, is, is using to deliver. But then even a nicer brand new SUV pulls up and the people trying to steal it <laughs> are in a nicer <laughs> SUV. So I'm just guessing it's a nicer part of Oakland. But here's the story is that, you know, okay, I'm, I'm thinking when I saw this, like, oh, so a DoorDash driver did something awesome and like stepped out of their realm and saved this kid and the car. No. It was her car, it was her kid, and she left it running. Mm. I mean, Un unlocked, like, unlocked, like not even directly in front of the house either. If you look at it, she's like pulled past the house a little bit and then walks up the driveway. But I mean, easy, en dude, was kind easy of enough that you can tell the other car had been following that person since they picked the food up. I'm pretty sure that their car was like right there when they came to the stop. Like it was like, oh, dude, they could have been the it. people who ordered it. They could have all been on it. Let me order food. Well, I think you. We'll... I think they just poach restaurants that are busy, watch DoorDashers that have the nicest cars, and follow them. Is yeah. it bad? The I'm only gonna... thing I kept thinking though was, man, she's driving an SUV. Gas is crazy for that SUV. <laughs> you, you weren't thinking about the kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> but first, when I saw before I even like read the article, and I saw, I really thought it was like DoorDash driver to the rescue. And I'm thinking, wow, that DoorDash driver is spending a lot of money on gas with an SUV. And then that, I read the that's article. That's the first thing like, I oh. thought too. <laughs> yeah. It was like I seen him pull out. I was like, oh, that's that's an SUV. That's gas guzzler. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I'm... I'm not happy. But they're saving money on child care, though. So, hey. Well, no, because they got Well, when the, the child back. is gone, they're not going to have the <laughs> That's I mean, they they not funny. I don't know. Three and a half seconds. <laughs> for whatever. Don't learn to lock the door after that. I but, mean, nowadays, I mean, all the cards little click, click thing. Like, if, if nobody's actually watched the video, um, it, it, is a, it is a clickbait title that. <laughs> ktvu oh, did Absolutely. but like, but that will show you how fast someone's gonna steal yeah. your car yeah. if you leave it running luckily mine is a fob so if you get in it you press on the brake or try and put it in gear it automatically dies right yeah. i think mine awesome. mine would go but if i have my fob with me but it's not going to go very far it's going to go about maybe a half a block or something and it's done <laughs> No, I tested mine. I, I got in it, started it up, got out, put the fob on the ground, got back in, pressed the brake, and it was like, doop. See, Gary would be the one to test it. I don't know. <laughs> I, the whole thing to me as a mom is just so incredibly scary. First of all, 
kid almost gets hijacked by a carjacker. And then on top of that, the carjacker gets out and then runs it into a wall, which is even more scarier. So you go from like one scary situation to, oh my God, my daughter's in a car that's going to crash. And oh. That and already, like we were talking about this, you guys backstage. That already, I I'm wondering how many crimes that person could face because there could be kidnapping in there, even though really they only didn't even get across the street with them. <laughs> I mean, why well, well, they got the car? This. I they think it'd be a, a, it. it was like a three or four seconds there. of kidnapping. It was like yeah, three or four then, seconds. But then they ran into another person's wall that that. Uh, destruction of property like in front of their house so yeah let, let's see we, we got damage they, we, we got <laughs> we got uh the car theft <laughs> grand theft grand theft auto uh we got reckless driving yep. we got a, a, a child, child endangerment, endangerment child, child endangerment, child endangerment attempted kidnapping, kidnapping <laughs> attempted kidnapping of a minor <laughs> contributing to the delinquency of a minor because they probably had you know some drugs on them and dude, how uh, how how stupid if they had got caught? How bad is that person going to have in jail? What are you in for? I I, uh... I, <laughs> said the car I hope they make up a good story because that one's just going to have people going, man, you're so. Stupid. I just said that the carjacker <laughs> probably got into the car. The baby or the kid was probably sleeping totally silent until the lady starts screaming, "My daughter, my daughter!" The carjacker probably went. <gasps> I'm out. Yeah. It oh happens gosh, more often. Yeah. This deep, that happened more often than not. Carjackings where the a child is still in the car because they only thinking about the car. They don't think about what's right. going to be in there. So this actually happens more often than not. There was a there was Scary. a dasher in California. Was it last year or the year before that the kid did get kidnapped? I don't know if you guys I've remember that. And the and the and I believe <laughs> the the parent or the person who was driving the parent was living out of the car on top of it. Wow. So, I mean, just, you know, this horror situation, but I don't now, know. Let me ask this question. Is it wrong that one of the thoughts that comes to my mind is, you know, after that car runs into the wall, is like, how are you going to try to explain that dent on the insurance? Are you going to say, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I got into a minor fender bender and what happened while well, I left my car? And- yeah, yeah, you say screwed. somebody tried to steal my car. <laughs> while yeah. you left it running, will the insurance give you a <laughs> and the, and the, and the, <laughs> Yeah, the door open and locked. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind still, of screwed. Still, still theft. That's when you yeah. have a little sugar packet and you pour it in the gas tank so you just get a new car. I don't know what they did. I, I don't know what they did. I mean, yeah, she, they had it. She needs one. She's driving an SUV. <laughs> So well, like, they just yeah. going to come in there. They just like, that, that, that thing, you're all in the news, man. I have it all on video. That's, I'm going to deny that claim. <laughs> yeah, I don't. This is a really good question, Christopher. I don't know why. Um, in fact, like, well, I can, I can tell you fob, why. It's, it's lack of options. I mean, that, I know, that's what dude, it is. You're not. Out yeah, of the babysitting. To lock babysitting your car. is too expensive. Even if it involves turning it off, you're not out of that option. Well, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. Well, well I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, we're not talking okay. about the yeah. the reason why you leave the car unlocked with your kid inside, but like why you have your kids in there in the first place. Most of the time, it's like you say, who who are you gonna pay to watch them? Is it gonna be worth it? You going out to do? I don't know how much money you're gonna make with DoorDash, but. Definitely the responsibility of making sure your child is secure. She failed. Yeah, like like if it was me and I had to leave my kid in the car at that young age, it, I definitely would have the back window cracked enough just for the air. And it, whenever I got out, <laughs> I would lock the door real quick, even though it's only three, four seconds. Like your dog. <laughs> yeah, like a dog. Yeah, that's what I just thought of the second he said, "Wow, yeah. <laughs> window crack." I mean, it's the most humane thing. <laughs> Well, because I mean, how, how young is the child? I, I didn't watch the video. Yeah, it, it doesn't say. say. But I I, like I'm guessing toddler. Yeah. toddler. I'm guessing toddler. Then I would have. I wouldn't do it at all. Then that that young, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that uh, kind of work. That's too young. Uh, I think like the, four, like five, very six, seven. Says, so, you, uh, so you're just gonna be homeless. Was, the child was not not hurt. <laughs> so far, no word on any arrests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, I get people have to work. That, that's just how it is. I mean, I'm just like, guys, I would, I would be, I wouldn't feel comfortable enough. To it, it could be a uh, now. I would say if she wasn't driving the big old SUV and everything like that, that she probably was a single mother. But you know, that's an expensive SUV to to say that. Yeah, it's a lot of the context that we don't know. Oh, well, right. Was a, someone gets oh, so the peep the people were in a Mercedes who tried to jack the car. And they were in a Mercedes SUV, and they were trying to steal a Durango. 
It was a new one, like a nice one. Yeah, oh, it, it was, was nice. nice one. Yeah, so that's a nice Durango. New. I mean, yeah. yeah, no, they both look brand new actually. But I will say the people who were trying to steal it had the nicer car. I guess I wanted to, the first thing I wanted to start off with is I think a lot of people that might be watching this are wondering, you know, like what is the reality of this independent contractor rule change? We've been hearing about it forever. We're not going to be employees. I'm starting to hear this from people now. Like, you know, you were talking about this so long ago before it seems like the product, it's never going to really happen. What's going on? Why, why would it be so black and white to be employee or not employee? Why wouldn't we just stick with the independent contractor rules that have been in place for years? Or if they were to be tweaked out, why wouldn't they just be tweaked? Why would it have to go so dramatic one way or the other? And that's what I kind of am hearing. And I, I'm not trying to put like fear out there, but I also don't want people getting too comfortable with the fact that it's, in my opinion, it's a big reality. Am I wrong? Is that's not opinion. Um, it's fact. So I was in a Zoom meeting last week before I went to the Bruce Springsteen concert and got COVID. Um, I was in this Zoom meeting with Illinois state lawmakers. They were talking about the independent contractor issue. And there was a woman there representing the Illinois AFL-CIO. And as we all know, uh, the AFL-CIO has been the driving force behind pushing this effort to wipe out a lot of independent contractors. It has been several years now of these policies being shown to fail in ways that Karen Anderson can talk about for hours on end. She knows the ins and outs of all of it. This woman last week from the AFL-CIO walked into this meeting, introduced herself by saying, we continue to favor a strict ABC test. And as I sat in that meeting, they described independent contractors as Uber drivers, illegal immigrants, and felons, which I called them out on and explained that that's absolutely ridiculous. And there was a moment that I think encapsulates everything that's been going on where the chairman of the committee, the state committee in the legislature in Illinois that was in this meeting, was talking about how he thought this ABC test wouldn't affect him because he was a independent contractor who did real estate appraisals for real estate companies. And since he worked with multiple real estate companies, he'd be absolutely fine because he was a legitimate independent contractor. And um, I interrupted and said, I'm so sorry to tell you, but part B of this ABC test that the AFL-CIO is pushing for nationwide puts you out of business too. Welcome to the state of California. You're now one of us who's going to lose everything. And this is everything we've been fighting against. And a hush fell over that room like you wouldn't believe. So the idea that this is going to stop anytime soon, I think, is fantasy. They are continuing to push for it at the state levels. They're continuing to push for it at the federal level. Just over Labor Day weekend, I don't know how many of the lawmakers I saw promoting the PRO Act over on Twitter, and we're about to have this regulatory change at the U.S. Labor Department that will get them as close to this as they think they can get without the Supreme Court stopping them through a regulatory change instead of a legislative change. But they, they made absolutely no bones about the fact that they still favor this, they're still pushing for this, the fight is still on. Plug in here too, Gary's not with us tonight, but... You know, Gary, he, he doesn't do this. What he has put into this versus what he charges for it, he could probably charge 10 times as much, and it would still be worth every single penny. So GaryZapps.com, GaryZapps.com, GaryZapps.com. You, you know, don't leave home without him. If you're driving and you're not using those apps, just go there, check it out, look what he's doing, and I think you're going to find out that, um, it, it's worth every penny and then some, you, you know, you'll that I look, you, if you go to Gary's apps.com, download it, use it, and you don't think it saved you money, let me know. And I'll have Steve refund your money. <laughs> I, I will come fly in person and refund it and slap <laughs> you for not liking something awesome. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. But I mean, a lot of people, and I got to tag this into there too. A lot of people think of Gary's apps as a filtering app to just say, well, I don't want rides less than this, this, and this. 
in reality, Gary said it himself, really, it does do all that, but it's also the biggest number one thing it does is safety. Number one, uh, you know, and, and I, I just, I'm, life before and life after Gary Zapps are, are just completely, it's like after one night, you'll be like, how did I do this before I had this? I don't even know. I was so bad, Steve. I mean, so bad about having switching back Lyft and, and forth. Uber, well, I'd have Lyft and Uber both on, sitting there at the airport, seeing who's going to get there first, and be like, you know, I'm watching this little kind of okay. You're uh, seven of twenty-one. You're you know, you know, back and forth, back and forth, and the Lyft one okay. And then I, I'd, I'd go and I'd pick up my Lyft and right in the middle, picking up the Lyft passenger. Boo, 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 boo. Oh no! Now the Uber guys go. Oh, I forgot to turn that off. And now I'm now I'm, I'm fighting traffic, and I can't reach over and turn it off. Uh, Gary Zapp saves you all that trouble. So go do it. You know, uh, you you're not wasting your time and energy by doing that. So and guys, check out Gary Zapp's and uh, check out Tom's. Yeah, podcast. 